Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to MAC 1105. In this video, I will be introducing uh, one of the very important functions in uh, college algebra. And this function, um, I think um, many of you already touched a little bit of it um, at the end of the course intermediate algebra. Mm, this function we represent a parabola, it is called quadratic function. Okay, uh, and uh, in this video, we will be uh, learning again all the formation, all the form of quadratic function, and we also learn how to write quadratic function. Okay, so let's get started. <coughs> so put the topic today will be uh, quadratic function. Again, on the first part, let's see what's quadratic function look like. Definition. Okay. Uh, quadratic function has two forms. The first form we call um, <coughs> the first form we call the standard form. <laughs> standard form. And uh, most of you, uh, you guys already learned this form in uh, intermediate algebra. Okay. This is what it look like. f of x equal to <coughs> ax squared plus bx plus c. That is the standard form. So what is a, b, c over here? a, b, c over here is just uh, coefficient. Okay, they are um, constant. <coughs> so they constant. They coefficient. I mean, they could be uh, could be positive or negative. It could be uh, fraction. <coughs> okay. Right. And um, the a value we call the leading coefficient. A value we call the leading coefficient. And uh, the C value is uh, we call the Y intercept value. Okay, Y intercept value. Let me change a little bit over here. I think it's the. Uh, <coughs> y intercept value. Now just imagine what if I have uh, uh, B C equal to 0? What happened? If B. Uh, equal c equal to zero. Just think about that. If b and c equal to zero, so all the part over here will be gone, right? Then uh, <coughs> my function become f of x equal to ax squared only. Okay. Is this one is still called a quadratic function? Yes, it is. Because the uh, the the highest degree is the second degree. And the highest degree over here is still second degree, even though it doesn't have a, a second term and a third term, but it's the highest degree is second degree. So this is still called quadratic function. This is not full, it's non-full. Okay? It means that it doesn't have enough all the term. And this one have enough all the term, which is good. But this one is still called quadratic function, even though it doesn't have the second term and the third term. <coughs> now what if I have, uh, if B, if b equal to 0 only, what happened? If b equal to 0 only, then fx equal to ix squared plus c. Is it still a quadratic function? Yes. You know, it just doesn't have enough uh, number of terms, but it's the highest degree is still is still the second degree, so we still call it a quadratic function. However, if c equal to 0, or if a equal to 0, <coughs> if a equal to 0, then my function become bx plus c. Ah, what is this? This is not quadratic anymore because the second degree is not the, the highest degree is not second degree. The highest degree is the first degree. So this is linear. Okay, it's a linear function. It's not quadratic. Okay. <coughs> Alright. And the A value is uh, very important. Uh, before we talk about A value, I just want to let you guys know that a quadratic function is, uh, it is to represent parabola. Okay, parabola, and uh, parabola is opening up or opening down. It de depends on the a value. Mm -hmm. It depends on the a value. If uh, the a value is positive, <coughs> okay, 
if a value is positive, um, um, if a value is positive, then <coughs> the parabola is going to be opening up. So you're going to have something like this. Uh, here you go. You're going to have something like that. Parabola is going to be opening up. And if the a value is less than zero, so I mean the a value is negative, then parabola, parabola could be opening down. Okay, it could be opening down. So the difference between opening up and opening down is that for the opening up, you see the lowest point here, we call the minimum point. But for the opening down, the, the highest point here, we call the maximum point. <coughs> maximum point. In the axis, the line, okay, the line that going through the minimum point here, or going through the maximum point, uh, you know, that's a vertical line. It's a vertical line right here. <coughs> that's going to the maximum point and minimum point. This line here, we call the axis of symmetry. And the equation for the axis of symmetry will be x equal to negative b over 2a. This is the equation of axis of symmetry. Okay. Now we know that this is a minimum point, and this we know this is a maximum point. Then how we find the coordinate of this minimum and maximum? You see this line over here is going to uh, go to the minimum point. I have the, the equation x equal to negative b over two a. So it means what? It means the coordinate. The coordinate of. I'm going to use different color over you. <coughs> Uh, you can uh, tell the difference. The coordinate um, of uh, this point right here will be uh, negative b over 2a also because the x component is going through uh, the x component of this point. I mean, this, this line going through the x component of this point and the y component in order to get the y component, you know, calculate f of negative b over 2a. Okay, so this will be the coordinate, will be the coordinate, coordinate of. Uh, uh, max or mean point depends. Yeah, it's max or mean point. If it is, if it um, uh, if uh, if it opening up, it could be mean point. If it is opening, that would be maximum point. Okay. <coughs> okay. So let's see uh, what else we we want to discuss uh, before we start with our first example here. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> All right. There's more over here. Yeah, I think I'm going to use the different color right here. <coughs> Do you see the intersection point right here? Uh, right here and right here. Or right here and here. This intersection point, you see that it cut the x-axis, right? It cut the x-axis. This is the y-axis. This is the x-axis. And because it's cut the x-axis, so this two point right here, this point right here and this point right here, we call the x-intercept point x-intercept point and um, this point right here it cut the y-axis we call this one this y-intercept point okay y-intercept point so um, this one over there this is y-intercept point so whether or not whether or not the function uh, always have x-intercept and uh, whether or not the function always have y-intercept well the function might have a uh, y intercept um, all the time or it depends yeah, i mean well uh, think about uh, if, if if the c over here is zero if the c over here is zero then then of course we don't have y intercept because we already know that c y intercept value if c equals zero then we don't have y intercept right okay we don't have it in that case okay it could be Okay, it could be. For example, like this, if c equal to zero, let me um, if c equal to zero, we don't have y-intercept. Then it could be the function could be something like this. Could be uh, <coughs> um, well, I mean, uh, I I mean, what I mean is that if c equal to zero, the, the y-intercept could be zero. That's what I mean. Okay, it doesn't mean that we don't have y-intercept. It does look like we don't have it, but just think about that. We we have some, we, we we may have something like this, right? We have something like this, and the y-intercept over here is zero. 
Okay, that's that's what we this that's a c equal to zero. So c c equal to zero, c equal to zero. We mean the y intercept will be zero. Okay, so whether or not the function has uh, y intercept all the time, yeah, actually they 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 always have it. No, it it could have something else um, other than zero, and it could be equal to zero. And even if c equal to zero, you see that we may have something like this. This is also y intercept. So the answer is here. This uh, it does have y intercept all the time. Okay, it does have y intercept all the time. All right. And how about x intercept? Well, if you look at if you look at this case, you see that we don't have any x intercept. Here. So this is no x intercept here. Right? No x intercept. No x intercept point. Right. Uh, I mean. Uh, the in, uh, what I mean over the intercept point, which is the the um, the, uh, uh, the 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 one that's going through. Of course, I mean when we talk about the touching part, actually they still have x intercept um, uh, x intercept here. So I think I think I'm gonna just go ahead and erase this part because it's it's not clear for you. So I'm gonna give you some uh, thing else that's much uh, uh, clearer. So what if I have uh, uh, something like this? Uh, what if I have something like this? Okay, uh, how about we have something like that? Here you go, something like that. Okay, so some, if we have something like this, then we don't have no uh, no x intercept, no x intercept. Point, okay, no x intercept point. Okay, all right. So this one is still, we still have x intercept point, okay? Even though it's, it's not going to, even though it's touching, but it, 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 if it is touching, then it's still okay. It's still called an x intercept point, okay? It doesn't have to go through the x uh, go through the x axis no. And uh, how about the this, the second sketch right here? This, do you think this one has the y intercept? Yes, they do. It just go ahead and extend this out. Okay, you extend and you see that it's gonna cut somewhere over here. So they do have y intercept. So they always have y intercept. Okay, always. Okay, they always have y intercept. But and uh, for the x intercept, some sometimes they have it, sometimes it doesn't have. It. Remember the remember the one of the method we show a quadratic equation. Well, remember when we uh, try to find uh, the um, uh, try to find the x value we solve equation using the quadratic equation, and uh, sometimes the, the b square minus four ac and you take square root give you the negative number, and give you the complex number, right? And when you when you answer the complex number, we don't have we don't have intersection point, okay? We don't have intersection point. But this one we still have x intercept one, okay? So this is we still have this is x intercept value. So this is x intercept point will be also zero zero. Okay? And this y intercept the y intercept one y intercept one is also uh, zero zero. Okay? <coughs> now let me give you the example. What I have um, uh, quadratic function like this, uh, negative 2x squared plus 3x minus 5, here you go, I mean this is 4, they have, they have all the term, and all can have something like this, and uh, the 3x squared plus 4, this is also quadratic equation, or, or I have something uh, something like this, um, 3, uh, negative, uh, uh, negative, negative 3x squared plus X, okay, this is also quadratic function. So as long as, as long as the second degree, which is the highest degree in, in the function, that is called quadratic function. Okay. Now I want you to uh, to focus on the f uh, function right here, and uh, I'm going to use this uh, that function. Okay, f x, and we try to find um, information uh, about this function. Okay, so on the first part. <coughs> Now first part, I want you, um, uh, I think I changed a little bit, I think I'm going to change this to positive, okay, just change the positive, okay. Uh, uh, first part, I want you to find domain, so find domain of the, this function, okay, that domain is, okay. Um, then uh, you want to find um, um, uh, um, the, the vertex, okay, the maximum point, find uh, vertex, vertex point. Okay, so the maximum, the maximum point or the minimum point over here is the vertex. Okay, this is a vertex. 
right. So then let me let me add over here just in case you have forgot. So this is vertex. Okay. So yeah, uh, find the vertex uh, pawn and then uh, oops, I'm sorry. And um, uh, and axis of symmetry. <coughs> okay. Then uh, uh, on proxy, I want you to find uh, find x and y intercept point. Okay, let's see how we're gonna do this. Okay, and so. <coughs> so final domain. I mean, uh, this is a problem, and uh, no matter what the problem is opening up or opening down, it depends on the a value. However, the the, the domain of any uh, parabola, okay, the domain of any parabola is uh, always negative infinity to. Uh, positive infinity. You see that all the parabola I I draw I sketch over here. This the domain always go from negative infinity to positive infinity. But the range may be different. Okay, uh, the range depends on um, uh, the highest point or the 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 lowest point of parabola. So in this case, you see that because the the a a is negative. Okay, so because a is uh, negative, you see the a equal negative two right here. It's a value right here. Uh, it's negative, so we know that it's going to be opening down. So we know that the parabola is going to be something like that, right? So we will have the maximum point. So it means what? It means that the range, the range will go from negative infinity, the range will go from negative infinity to to uh, uh, to the maximum point. Uh, to the y, to the the y component uh, of the maximum point, which is so. In order to get the y component, we need to know the, the coordinate to find the vertex point, right? Find the coordinate of the vertex point. So let's see how we will find the coordinate of the vertex point. So in order to find uh, the the coordinate, we're gonna use the the red one right here. Uh, we're gonna use the purple. I'm sorry, use the purple one right here. So we're gonna use the x component of the maximum point first, which is um, the x component over here will be x equal to negative b over two a, which is uh, um, will be negative negative will give you 3 over 2 a uh, will be negative 2 so it will be negative 3 over 4 that's x component so the y component I will going to put negative 4 into that so it will be f of negative 3 over 4 so it will be negative 2 negative 3 over 4 square uh, minus 3 negative 3 over 4 uh, plus 5 okay so you're gonna have uh, a negative 2 uh, 9 over 16 plus uh, 9 over 4 plus 5 uh, which is to give you negative 9 over 8 plus 9 over 4 plus 5 <coughs> so over here what we have we have uh, 18 18 minus 9 is uh, 9 over 8 okay plus 5 uh, 49 um, Forty-nine, uh, forty-nine over eight. Here you go. So the the vertex, which is v, the coordinate of the vertex will be negative three over four, and uh, forty-nine uh, over eight. Okay. So from here, this is the this will be the maximum, the y component. So from here, we can get the range. So the range will go from negative infinity to uh, forty-nine over eight, included. Okay. So the domain, the domain will be easy. This always go from negative infinity to positive infinity. But the range be, depends on the minimum point and the maximum point. All right. Now we're gonna find the axis of symmetry. Okay. This is the axis of symmetry right over here already. So we don't have to find it. So this is the axis of symmetry right here. This is the axis of symmetry. All right, that's axis of symmetry already. We don't need we don't need to find this. It's there already. <coughs> now we want to find uh, x intercept and uh, and y intercept. <coughs> Let's try to find um, uh, y intercept first. So in order to find y intercept point, and we this concept we've been doing so many many times already. Not just quadratic function, but it's in linear function we have been doing. We've been doing this already. In order to find y to uh, y to set point, you replace x with zero. 
then my y become negative 2 0 square minus 3 0 plus y so it will be 5 <coughs> okay then then you the y intercept point will be uh, 0 5 <coughs> and make sure you gotta put in all the pair form okay because if you stop right here most of the students stop right if you stop over here you have a y intercept value it's not a point you need to get this okay now in order to find x intercept point In order to find x and the set point will be uh, the same thing, but instead of replacing uh, x with zero, you're gonna replace y with zero. Okay, then we're gonna solve for that. Solve for the x. There you go. And in order to solve for this, the best way is to use quadratic um, formula. Maybe b so plus minus uh, b squared will be nine minus four ac over to a will be 2 times negative 2 okay so it will be 1 3 negative plus minus uh, 9 <coughs> um, we are uh, 9 plus uh, 40 over negative 4 so it will be 3 plus minus um, so this is 40 right here Okay, will be uh, plus uh, four square root of forty nine over negative four will be three plus minus of seven over four. So the answer will be one of them will be negative one, and the other one will be ten divided by four, which is five over two. All right, so that's the x intercept of uh, a point. Oh, that's the x intercept value. So the x intercept point will be uh, zero. Oh, I'm sorry, it will be negative one. Uh, negative one zero and and uh, five or two zero. So uh, with this information, the axis of symmetry, the vertex, <coughs> the range, the x and y intercept, we can do a quick sketch. Okay, we can do a quick sketch. What the quadratic, uh, what the parabola of this function look like? Okay. All right. Let's see. So you know, you, you we know that it's going to be uh, opening down. <coughs> And uh, whatever would be negative one, negative one here, and five with two is, uh, is two point five. So two here, three here, two point five right here. Okay, two point five, uh, five point uh, five over two. I'm sorry, not two point five. Uh, yeah, five over two is two point five. Yeah, uh, yes. <laughs> okay. All right, and uh, the vertex is uh, negative three over four. Um, Hmm, I think I'm, did I mess up anything here? Negative B, negative B over 2A, negative B over 2A, so negative 3 over 4, yep, so it's about uh, that much right over here. It's, it's, I think it should be positive, right? Negative B over 2A, negative B, negative, negative. so it would be negative, so over here. Uh, hold on, something, something not right. Um, did I calculate anything wrong over here? Uh, 49 over, 49 over 8. Mm. It's 6 point something. Uh, uh, 0, 5. Yeah, it said be opening zero five zero five. So you're gonna have um, something all the way is one, two, three, four, five. So it's gonna be something like this, <coughs> like that. Um, it's negative b, negative b. So negative b over two a. So negative three over four. Uh, negative 3 over 4 is all the way over here. I think I can't call it something wrong. Um, <sighs> no. Yeah, I think. Let's see. 2.5. It's 1 over here, 2, 2.5. Yeah, I think it's right here. The axis of symmetry is negative 3 over 4. I think something not right. 
I think something not right. Negative 2x squared minus negative 2x squared minus 3x plus 5. Uh, negative b. I think I can collect over here wrong over here. Something not right. Negative b plus minus b square. Yeah, I think I know. I think I thought. I think I know what, what's wrong right here. Right here is minus. It's minus. Uh, so should we be plus? Uh, ten, eight, four. Should we be plus one? So it's two a. So we plus one. And this is minus five with two. Oh yeah, so right here, right over here, guys. So it will be plus one and minus 5 over 2 so this will be plus 1 uh, 2.5 yeah it's the other way around so let me erase this <coughs> yeah it's just a careless mistake right here so we have um, negative 5 so it will be 1 so 1 of them oops oops okay so it will be 1 right here and it's 2 right here 3 right here so 5 over 2 right here to just a sketch okay so we have one point here we have one point here three point um three point five so one two three four five so it's gonna go through this and three point four so the axis of symmetry is here uh, it's because uh, three over four right so the axis of symmetry is here and uh, 49 49 over 8 is uh, 49 over 8 is a 6 point so 1 2 3 4 5 and up here is 6 6 right here all right so it's gonna be something like that so let's go through this the axis of symmetry is here all right so this is uh, this is um, 49 over 8 right here okay so we're gonna have something like that go through the origin we're gonna go. it's it's very hard for me to to sketch because you know uh, and this is going through here there you go something like that all right and this is uh this is five right here it's five there you go and this is going through one you see that I did not even go through you know it's kind of hard to graph to sketch there you go there you go oops oh, you know my hand kind of sound shaking you know there you go alright so over here will be uh, one All right, and this is 5 over 2 here you know what, I'm going to erase it and five two here. There you go. Good. So from here we know right away this is the the domain go from negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay. So that is that's how you'd find uh, vertex uh, x y intercept point. It's pretty easy. It's very uh, straightforward. Okay. Uh, of course, some cases like. Um, um, some cases we do, when we uh, when we find x intercept point, as I already told you before, when we find x intercept point, we we don't have a value. I mean, we have a complex number, the imaginary number. Okay? So in that case, we um, there's no intersection point. Okay. So, but however, this case we still have uh, uh, two x intercept point. Uh, so this x axis here, and this is y axis. All right. Good. Okay. Um, Uh, so that's the standard form. Okay. Now, um, uh, in, uh, in this form, I already said it. So you guys already learned intermediate algebra. However, in um, in college algebra, we also uh, learn another form. It is uh, called vertex form. So the second part, vertex form. Okay. And the vertex form looks like, like this: f of x equal to a. Uh, x minus h square plus k. Okay. And h and k over here is the coordinate of the the vertex. 
So I actually, uh, the H is uh, nothing but the H is actually negative over two A. <laughs> okay, that's the H. Okay, and the A value over here again, the A value here the same as the A value in the standard form. So yeah, a very important if A value in, in the standard form is three, then the A value in the vertex form is also three. Okay, and I tell you it's opening up or opening now. Uh, now I can uh, uh, I'll give you the example. What if I have something that is f of x equal to 3x plus 1 square minus 2. Okay, so you see the a value is 3. Where the h on this case, the vertex, the vertex is negative 1 because this is minus, so minus, minus give you plus. So negative 1. And the k value is negative 2. Okay, here you go. So the good thing about the vertex form is that in the vertex form, you know right away uh, the vertex coordinate. You don't need to find a negative b over 2a at all. And if you know the vertex, then of course the axis of symmetry is here. The axis of symmetry is x equal to negative 1. It's there. It's, it's there. It's obviously. Obviously, it's there already. You know, we don't need to find. We don't need to calculate anything else. Okay? That's the good thing about the vertex form. Of course, in, uh, these two forms are kind of related to each other. We can we can go from one form to the other form easily. Uh, what if I what if I want to convert this to um, a standard form? Yes, we can do that too. Very easy. Okay, convert uh, vertex to standard form. Okay, if you want to convert it now. Uh, look at this. If uh, if I want to convert this, so all I have to do is uh, I expand this one now. So expand this. So it will be uh, x plus one square is x square plus two x plus one uh, minus two, and you see that I distribute this to x square plus six x plus three minus two, which is three x square plus six x plus one, and you see that. This is the standard form. You see the A value and the A value here is the same no matter what form it is, but it's the same. But the good thing about uh, the standard form, you get the B value, this, I'm sorry, the C value, which is the y to set value right away. But um, for the um, vertex form, um, we have to find it. We have to find it. Okay. How about if I give you uh, the standard form and, and they want you to convert to vertex form? That's very easy to. I mean, of course, it's harder than than convert it to from uh, convert it to standard form from vertex form. But um, if you if, if they give you the standard form, you want to convert to vertex form. You just use the concept we we already learned. Okay, so convert standard to vertex. Okay, so how we do this? For example, I give you something like this: f of x equal to three uh, x squared minus two uh, x. Plus, uh, plus four, for example. Okay, and I want to convert this to uh, um, a vertex form. Okay, so in order to this, you gotta use uh, you gotta use um, complete the square. Okay, so how we do complete the square? You see, one of the, 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 the concept of complete the square we already learned when we saw quadratic equation, right? But in order to complete the square over here, you see that uh, the value over here is three. You need to uh, factor the three out. Okay, you need to factor the three out. You know, group these two, okay, factor the three, uh, the a value, okay. Then you're going to take this, right? You're going to take 2 over 3, you divide it. You take over 2 over 3, you divide it by 2, which is uh, 1 third, right? Uh, 1 third, you square it, 1 third, you 1 9, okay. And remember, after you square it, and in, in when you solve quadratic equation, you got to add to the other side also, right? But in this case, we have only one side. We don't have the other side, so you, you cannot go ahead and add one eye over here, okay? You, there's only one side because this side is fx already. So you gotta subtract it because you cannot add it to the other side, okay? Okay, so you have to subtract. So I, I think I'm gonna add a little bit of information here so that you know that what we're doing. So you have to um, uh, complete the square. So this is a completing square. Okay, complete the square. All right. All right. So right now, um, this three term here you're gonna, is going to go together. <coughs> okay, could be go through together, and uh, you get a distribute three to negative one nine. So three times negative one nine is negative 
uh, one third so distribute this in okay and four you keep it there here you go and uh, right over here is a perfect square it is three x minus one uh, which is uh, uh, the reason you got one I uh, one I because one three uh, one over three square right so you have minus the reason you have minus because it's minus here one over three square and over here will be uh, 11 over 3 here you go so that's the vertex form so the a value here what is the vertex here the vertex is would be 1 third and 11 third here you go okay so in order to to convert from standard form to vertex you have to complete the square okay there's only one option but in order to go from vertex to standard form very easy to just go ahead and, and expand them out okay now what if they give you um the vertex form okay and uh, and uh, they want you to find x and y intercept so how how we're gonna do that example uh, four five uh, x and y intercept of the following uh, quadratic function okay what if we give you this f of x equal to 2 x plus 1 square minus 3 okay so uh, remember the concept of finding x y intercept you're going to replace x and y with 0 right uh, so in order to find y intercept you're going to replace x with 0 Right. You know, in the standard form, you don't have to do anything because that's this, this, the C value right there already. But this one, you gotta replace x with zero. So my y give you two zero plus one square minus three, which is uh, minus one. So the y-intercept one will be zero negative one. But for the x-intercept one, you now for the uh, standard form, in order to find x-intercept one, right, you just need to replace x. Um, replace y with zero and you use, use quadratic formula remember my last time we use quadratic formula here you see but this is the this is the vertex form i mean uh, we cannot use the quadratic formula we don't want it so in order to do that we're going to just go ahead um, first of all you're going to set back set it equal to zero okay then we're going to solve for x and one of the method remember one of the method of solving quadratic function is using square root both sides right i mean you can expand them out and use quadratic formula but this is a vertex form we don't do that okay i mean you can but i mean that's not nice doing that so you're going to use square root method okay so you just go in order to take do square root method you're going to uh, isolate this perfect square and you're going to take square root <coughs> so you're going to take square root so you have x plus 1 equal to plus minus square root of 3 over 2. Okay, you take square root both sides. And x will be equal to plus minus square root of 3 over 2 minus 1. There you go. So the x intercept one will be, the first one will be negative uh, uh, 3 over 2 minus 1 comma 0. And the second one will be um, uh, square root 3 over 2. Uh, let me change it a little bit. Uh, uh, minus one comma zero here you go maybe somebody should ask me you need to calculate them out well, you don't have to unless unless they want you to sketch the graph if they want you to sketch it you're gonna go ahead and calculate this out and locate it on the corner system okay good now in example number five and it's pretty uh, very simple uh, example in this example I'm going to show you how to write quadratic function and this is will be on the test okay? um, given some information which um, which has maximum one will be uh, one three okay and goes through one Okay, and goes to point uh, one three, and go to point negative two, negative three. 
Yeah. Okay. So how are we going to do this? Uh, first of all, the maximum point over here is the vertex. Okay. So they give you the vertex. And in order to write a quadratic function, In order to write a quadratic function, you always use a vertex form. You don't want to use standard form, okay? And the first step you have to do is go ahead and write out this form. This is vertex form. Um, so, so far you learned how to write a uh, linear equation of y equal to mx plus b, right? You, you, you already learned how to write equation of the circle, right? For, for the linear equation, uh, you have to use m and b. For the equation of the circle, you got to find h and k, which is the center and the radius. And now for quadratic equation, you got to find the vertex and the a value. Okay, don't be, don't be uh, mistaken um, amongst three function, three equation. Okay, this they they different. Okay, I remember last time in the test, you guys use. Uh, um, Y equal to mx plus b to write the circle equation. This is, it doesn't make sense. Y equal to mx plus b is the line. Okay, so be careful. So over here, you got to find h and k, and they already give you h k. One, three. So you go ahead and plug them in. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, now, the second step you have to do is to find a value. And in order to find a value, a value you're going to use the point right here. Okay, don't plug this point into H and K, okay? The maximum point, which is the vertex point, you plug it in. But for this, you're going to plug into X and Y. So this is going plugged into Y. Negative 2, you're going to go into X. Okay, minus 1 square. And we're going to calculate A value. Okay, so if you give you A, so you give you negative 3 square plus 3. So negative 3 equal to 9A plus 3. Um, so... From here we have 9a equal to negative uh, 6 and a equal to negative 6 over 9 which is um, negative 2 third. So that's a value. So after you get an a value, you're going to plug over here, okay? Let me erase this. Uh, you're going to plug over here. No, you don't want to plug into this one. You're going to plug into the one with x and y. Then my final one, so will be f of x equal to a negative 2 or 3. You have to keep the x, okay? x minus 1 square plus 3. Here you go. That's his final answer. Okay. It's pretty straightforward. So remember that, okay? So in, order, in order to write quadratic function, you need to find h and k, which is the vertex. And most of the time, they give you the vertex, which is the maximum point of minimum. And you have to get one of the point, plug it in, okay, to find a. And you're done. All right? I want you to... To, to do example number five carefully because we'll be on the test definitely we'll be on the test all right make sure you know how to do this and don't be confused with the equation of the circle or the uh, this or linear equation okay there's nothing to do with that okay nothing to do with that all right okay um let me see i can uh give you uh, another example Oh, now what if what if after I um, I uh, after I write an equation a quadratic function a quadratic uh, equation already? What if I want you uh, I want to find um, the the b value? Uh, what if I want to find the, the not the b value the c value which is the x and y intercept? Okay, let's see how we're gonna find it. Okay, so let's see find x intercept. Nice. In order to find x intercept one, uh, we're gonna replace this with zero. So you have negative two or three x minus one square plus three equal to zero. All right, we use square root methods. So you're gonna have uh, negative two over three x minus one square equal negative three. So negative uh, two equal x minus one square multiply both sides by three give you negative nine. And divide both sides by 2, so you have x minus 1 square equal to 9 over 2. Now, in order to get the x, you take square root both sides, so you will have, um, uh, um, you have x minus 1 equal to plus minus square root of 9 over 2. So the x will be 1 plus minus square root of 9 over 2, which is you have 2x intercept 1. The first one will be 
one plus uh, square root of negative two comma zero, and the second one is one minus square root of negative two comma zero. Okay. Now for y intercept one, you're gonna do the same thing, but now you're gonna replace you're gonna replace uh, x with zero. So you're gonna have y equal to okay negative two over three zero minus one square. Okay, plus 3, 0 here. So you have y equal negative 2 over 3, negative 1 square is 1, plus 3. It is negative 2 over 3 plus 3, you're going to have uh, 7 over 3. So the y-intercept one will be 0, 7 over 3. There you go. Okay. So try to learn... Um, the method of solving x intercept and y intercept one when the quadratic function in vertex form and in standard form okay uh, the general approach is the same and the answer of course will be the same okay but the method during the process of x intercept one will be different you see over here you gotta use quadratic formula uh, but over there but over here we use what we just use a square root method all right and in order to scatter, you gotta go ahead and calculate this one now. Okay. So this is an extra question I wanna add so that so for you to practice more. Okay. So the question example number five here, I'm gonna go ahead and and, and circle them because it's uh, very important. So I'm gonna circle them. Uh, I think I'm gonna use. Um, so I'm gonna circle them here. Okay. Because this will be on the test, and actually all of this um, potentially will be on the test. I probably add x intercept one and find y intercept one also. Okay. Okay. Good. All right. So, um, so that's the first part. Oh, I think. That's, oh, that's the. That's just the first. I think I messed up with the. The Roman right here. So, um, so the second part, um, the second part, which is the um, the um, that not the, the the application of quadratic function. Uh, however, um, uh, I'm I'm gonna stop the video here. Okay, and uh, I have another video for application of quadratic function, and. Um, uh, hopefully that um, uh, hopefully that you don't need it but um, uh, if we uh, if you need it uh, I can uh, send you the video on the application of quadratic function um, on the test uh, I don't think I'm gonna uh, give you uh, application of quadratic function um, but uh, if if you see application of quadratic function uh, in my MATLAB homework, please let me know. Okay, I mean I'm gonna send you a video for you to watch. So I'm gonna stop the video for the, um, uh, the, the definition of quadratic function over here, and uh, I'll be seeing you on the second part, uh, application of quadratic function. All right, bye bye.